Hello everyone, I'm Josiah and in this video I'm going to show you how to add saving and loading functionality to your GameMaker game. We're going to start with writing and reading variables to a text file, then we're going to learn how to use structs and JSON to easily save and load multiple variables together, and even how to save multiple objects across different rooms. And finally, we're also going to have a quick look at how to use buffers to make your save system more performant and platform independent. I'm going to be using a very simple example project, which you can see here. I can eat this cheese by clicking on it and it will reduce my hunger. I can also move it around and create more cheese as well as apples. And I can switch between two different rooms. Now, whenever I press the S key on my keyboard, it will save the current setup of both of my rooms with all of the objects and their positions in it. When I close the game and start it again, I can press the L key and it will load all of my objects exactly how I left them. But let's start from the beginning. Our first goal will be to save and load a single variable. We'll start by creating a new script containing a function each for saving and loading the game. We'll also create a new object called object save and add it to both of our game rooms. Then we'll add two key press events to it in which we call the saving and loading functions we just created. Now let's write a simple function to save a single variable. We'll use file text open write to open a text file to save data to. I'm giving it the .txt ending so I can easily open it up in a text editor and show you the data that it's being saved, but you're free to give this any ending you want. Filetext open write returns a reference to the opened file, which is needed to write data into it. So we'll save that to a temporary variable. Now we'll use file text write real to write our variable into the file. I'll be saving the global hunger variable. If you want to save a string instead of a number, use file text write string instead. After writing to or reading from a file, it needs to be closed for the data to be properly saved. To do that, we'll use file text close. To check if it works, let's run the game, reduce our hunger variable a bit and press the save key. Then let's open our file browser and type percent local app data percent backslash and then your project name. And here we can see the saved file and in it the value of the variable that we saved. Next, let's create the function to load this value back into our game. Before loading data, we have to make sure that a save file exists. So we'll use if file exists for that. Then we'll use the file text open read, which works in a similar way to file text open write, but allows us to read data from the file instead of writing it. Then we'll use file text read real to load the saved value and store it back into our hunger variable. And finally, we can't forget to use file text close after we're done with the file. If we run the game now and press the load key, we'll see the hunger variable go back to the value we saved previously. Now, what if we want to save more than one variable? We could use an additional file text write real for each of our variables. However, this can get quite messy and confusing the more variables we add. So a more reusable approach is to use structs. A struct is a variable that holds a collection of other variables. It can hold however many different variables we want to put in it, and those variables can even be of any type. So we can store numbers as well as strings, arrays, or even other structs. Let's see how we can use this to store not only our hunger variable, but also the position and state of an object in our game. In our save function, we'll add a new struct like this. Then we'll add all the variables we want to save. Notice that there's a slight difference to how we declare variables in a struct. We use a colon instead of an equal sign and commas between declaring variables instead of semicolons. Now, to save this struct into our file, we'll have to first convert it to a string. We do that by using JSON stringify. This will save the struct in the commonly used JSON format. Finally, we'll change this line, so instead of saving our hunger variable, we'll save our JSON string to the save file instead. Let's run the game again, save and open our save file to see what the JSON looks like. As you can see, each value is saved together with the variable name. Now let's open up the load function and see how we can load this JSON data back into our game. Firstly, we now receive a JSON string from the file text read function. To access the variables within, it needs to be converted back into a struct. We'll use JSON parse for this. Then we'll set all of the variables to their corresponding values in the struct. Let's run the game again and load to see that all the variables are loaded correctly. Now let's try to save more than one object at a time. To do this, we will save each object's variables in a struct and save all of these structs into an array. Let's start by going to our save function and creating an empty array. With allows us to execute out from every instance of a certain object, so we'll use it to create a struct in every object we want to save. Since we're now creating the struct from within the instance we want to save, we should also remove the object references from it. Then we'll use array push to add the structs to our array. 
Then, instead of converting a single struct to JSON, we'll convert this new array that holds all of our object structs. To save different kinds of objects, all we need to do is duplicate this part and change the object. Each of our objects can save a different set of variables, so let's add an additional one to save the color of our apples as well. Finally, we'll use object get name to save the name of the object that we're currently saving. Let's run the game, create some food, and save. Our save file will now look like this. To make it a bit easier to read, we can paste this into a JSON beautifier like this one, and we'll see how it's structured more clearly. Now let's go to our load function. Since JSON parse now returns an array, let's rename this local variable. Now, the easiest way to load our instances will be to first destroy any existing instances of a given object and then create new ones from the data in our save file. So, let's use instance destroy to get rid of any existing instances of our cheese. Then, let's add a for loop that cycles through the array, retrieves every struct saved in it, and creates an instance for each of them. Now, we could assign each of the variables in the struct to the object by hand, but there's actually an easier way to do it. Instance create layer has an additional argument that allows you to provide a struct with variables which will automatically be assigned to the created instance. So if we put the struct in here, we don't need to type out every single variable. Keep in mind though that this only works as long as we have the variables in our save file named exactly the same way as their counterparts in the game object. Since we now load our variables from within the for loop, we can delete this old part of our code where we used to assign them one by one. Now, if you only need to save one type of object, that's all you need here. But since we save two different types of objects, we'll need to destroy our apples as well. And then we need to figure out which of the instances we're creating should be cheese and which apples. Luckily, we saved the name of each object earlier, so we can simply use assetGetIndex to create an instance of the correct object. Let's run our game now and load to see that all of the objects are loaded correctly. Now that we know how to save and load a bunch of data using structs and JSON, let's see if we can manage to save the state of different rooms. This can be a bit of a tricky one to figure out since we can't directly access the variables of objects in any room that isn't currently opened. So what we'll need to do is save the state of all objects in a room to a global persistent struct whenever we leave it, and then when we save the game, save this global struct to our save file. Firstly, in our saving script, let's create a global struct called game data. Since the hunger variable is global and not tied to any specific room or object, let's add it in here. Then let's add another empty struct called room data. This is where we'll save all of our rooms. Next, we'll need to split our save function into two. Let's add a function called save room and add it to our room and event. In this function, we'll save the setup of the current room to our global room data struct. So let's move the part where each of our instances saves its variables from the save game function over to the save room function. But instead of converting this array into JSON, we want to save it to our room data struct. So far, we've only set variables inside a struct when creating them, but we can assign new values to them at any point, the same way we would in objects variables. For example, we can at any point change the hunger value stored in our struct like this. Alternatively, we can use struct set, which would look this way. To access the room data struct within our game data struct, we can simply write global.gameData.roomData. Then we'll use room get name to save our room under its name. Lastly, we'll put the array containing all of our instance data as the value. Now let's go back to our save game function and make some adjustments there. Right now we only save the room state whenever we exit it, but we also need to save it before saving our game state. So let's add save room to this function too. Then, instead of converting an array, we'll convert our whole game data struct to JSON before saving it. Now, similarly to our save function, we'll also need to split our load function. Let's create a function called loadRoom and add it to the room start event. Since we saved each room under its name, we can now easily access the correct array to load. We'll use struct get and put in global.savedata.roomData as the struct and room get name as the name of the variable. Now, before we load the room data, we'll have to check if there is any data saved for the current room. If we never opened a certain room before, there won't be any room data on it. In this case, struct get will return the value undefined. So let's add an if condition to only continue if the array exists. We'll go back to our load game function and move this part of code that destroys our instances and creates new ones from the save file to the load room function instead. That already completes our load room function, so let's go back to load game. 
JSON parse will now return our entire save data, so let's save it as such. And then all we need to do is use load room to load the state of the room we're currently in. If we run the game now, we'll see that the room state stays the same even after switching rooms. And if we save now, reopen the game and load, all of the rooms will be exactly as we left them. Now, you can easily expand the system with more variables and more objects to fit your game's needs, but before you go, I want to show you one last thing. For most games, this way to save data to a text file will work just fine. However, if you want to save and load very large amounts of data and in very frequent intervals, you may run into performance problems. The file text write and read functions may also not work as expected on different platforms, especially on consoles. That's why I want to show you an alternative way to save and load using buffers. Don't worry, this is not a very complicated change to make and you don't have to understand a lot about buffers to use this. If you're interested to learn how they work exactly, feel free to read up on it in the documentation. So let's go to our saving script. Here, instead of using file text write string, put in the following lines. This first one creates a buffer of a certain size so that the save data perfectly fits into it. The second line writes the game data into the buffer. The third one saves the buffer as a file. And finally, the last line deletes the buffer from memory. Similarly to the file text functions, you can save the buffer as whatever file type you want. The results will be the same and if you save it as a txt file, you can still open it as before. In the loading function, we will also replace the file text read lines with ones that use buffers instead. The first one loads the buffer, the second one reads the data from it into the JSON string, and the third one deletes it. Don't worry, this won't delete the save file itself. And just like that, you have a way more performant and platform independent way to save and load your game. You can find a download link to the project I used in the video description, so feel free to have a look around in there. Thanks for watching and happy game making!